I finally got my house listed as for sale by owner. And for me, it was an ordeal. It was not easy, but I'll get to that in a minute. In this video, we're gonna talk about getting my house listed as a for sale by owner. We're gonna talk about the strategy I'm gonna use. And we're gonna talk about how Zillow guides consumers toward using a real estate agent. Because that's where Zillow makes all their money, most of their money, from selling consumer information to real estate agents as leads. Hi, my name is Joel Y. Full disclosure, I am a real estate agent in the state of Kansas. Please hit that subscribe and that like button down there because it helps other people to find this channel so they too can learn to sell their house for sale by owner and they can save thousands of dollars just like you're gonna do. The thing is, is this channel does not provide like a lot of entertainment per se. People come here maybe once or twice to learn how to sell their house themselves and when you, and when you subscribe, it helps bring it up so that people can find it easier. So hit that subscribe button and you'll be the hero. I finally got my house listed. Yay! So what happened? I wanted to list it when the peonies were, were blooming in the garden because they're so beautiful. But uh, that was two weeks ago and, and that's long gone. They've bloomed and gone away. So what happened was I, I, I filled out the for sale by owner. You saw that in the last video. I waited the 72 hours and nothing happened. So I sent an email asking. I didn't get an answer to that email. So I, when, you, when you list your house for sale by owner, if you try to go list it again, Zillow pops up a little box that says, this house is currently in review. So I checked that and it was out of review on my second attempt and nothing and nothing. So I sent another email, no answer. So I tried two more times and I sent a total of four emails and I tried to list it three times to no avail. So what happened finally was I, before I signed in, I hit the help button on Zillow and it took me to a place and I filled out a submit a, a, a form for help and I got an answer like in a half an hour. And it turns out that Zillow will not list real estate agents for sale by owners. I was using my agent site to try to list my house and I guess that, well, my guess is the reason that Zillow does that is to keep agents from listing their clients' houses as for sale by owners so they can collect both halves of the commission. I don't know why else they would do it and I wouldn't put it past agents to do that. But anyway, I finally got it listed and here it is and it's up and it's for sale and I've already had three showings, all with agents, unfortunately, but it's early. So what we're gonna talk about is my strategy. My strategy is to list it on Zillow as a for sale by owner for a while. I don't know exactly how long, I don't have a set date. It depends on how much attention I get and what kind of offers I get. And if I don't get enough attention or I don't get an offer that I like, I'll go ahead and put it on the MLS. Just like you can put it on the MLS by using a flat fee service and it's cost a fraction of what it would cost you to list it with a real estate agent. So it's still a huge savings. But once I get it listed on the MLS, then I'll end up having to pay an agent. I'm gonna list it as 2% instead of the usual around here, which is 3%, um, just because I wanna pay as little as possible. And another thing I'll do is they're gonna want me to fill out a form, the, the agent would want me to fill out a form, uh, it's a for sale by owner form, that says that I will pay them, you know, whatever they put on that form but I'm not gonna fill that out. I'm gonna to suggest to them that they write anything into the contract when they make an offer so that, so that it's full disclosure for, and transparency for the client too. So the buyer can also see what's going on as we negotiate this deal. And that way the buyer knows that the real estate agent's cost is included in the price of the house. Because what real, what real estate agents try to do a lot is say that, hey, we're buyer's agent and it doesn't cost you anything, but indeed it does cost consumers when they have a buyer agent because that gets worked into the price of the house. So that's how I'll do it. I'll ask them to write it directly onto the contract, any commission they think they wanna receive, and we'll negotiate it from there. Okay, now let's jump on the computer and I'm gonna show you how Zillow guides consumers toward using an agent. Like I say, that's where Zillow makes their money and they wanna pacify those agents and keep them happy. Looking at it from the viewpoint of a consumer looking for a house, I pull up Zillow, come over to buy, comes down, there's a drop down menu, there's lots of options, foreclosures, for sale by owners, open houses, etc. but what we want is homes for sale. Now over here on homes for sale, I'm gonna change this to a bigger area here, for easier to work with. Okay, there we go. Over here on homes for sale, you can see that there's a lot of agent listings. Zillow has separated them. They've separated agent listings and for sale by owners. You can see over here, 88 other listings. So they default to agent listings. Now, if somebody comes on Zillow and they wanna look at for sale by owners, they just come over and click on other listings. There you go. So that is one way that Zillow is 
driving consumers to use an agent. But now let's pull up my listing here. Okay, there it is, public view. Okay, there I am. So up at the top, they have the price and then they have for sale by owner prominently displayed. So everyone knows it's a for sale by owner, but under that is contact agent in big blue, can't miss it. So that Zillow wants somebody to click on that right away. But what we were hoping consumers do is to scroll down to look at the house, look at that, and then look at the description. Now on the description, you can see right below it where Zillow puts your, your, your information right there, that's new. But what you wanna do is also write it in the description and you wanna put it above the see more tab. So what I do is I start the description and then I interrupt them. Contact me directly by texting, blah, blah, blah. So now if they, if they don't click the see more button, they're gonna see my, my number right there. And if they do click the see more button because they're curious about the rest of the description, I'm also gonna put it down here. So they'll see it twice. It's really on their mind. I'm hammering that into contact me directly. And that's it. So I've got it listed there twice. Zillow has it down here. So my number's on there three times. Hopefully they scroll through and see that before they click on contact an agent. The ultimate thing you wanna do is find yourself a buyer and just transact directly with buyer and seller so that you don't have to pay any middleman to fill out paperwork for you. But that's not always the case and not always possible. The real estate industry is ripe for disrupt disruption and they know it and they're scrambling to stay relevant. And again, Zillow makes most of their money from real estate agents. So while real estate agents are still relevant, Zillow is gonna continue to do what they do. And keep in mind, you are going to get much more exposure if you do list on the MLS. And you can do that again with this flat fee service. I'll show you how to do that right here. But if you want all that exposure and you don't mind paying a buyer's agent, then that's, then that's gonna be your best bet. But me, I'm gonna to try to attract a buyer first without an agent so that I can keep all the money. But we'll see how it goes and I will keep you updated. Please hit that subscribe button. Once again, this is not a channel that people come back to again and again to be entertained. They come once, maybe twice to learn how to sell their house themselves, just like you're doing to save thousands of dollars. So hit that subscribe button, please, and you'll be the hero.